Welcome to Lakeside Worship Center. God is good, and He's good all the time. We have a very, very exciting service lined up for you today. We have Associate Pastor J.R. Ferales who will bring the message, and the title of his message is, No Jesus, No Christmas. Get your Bibles out, turn to the book of Luke, the 19th chapter, the 9th through the 10th verse. I am ready to worship. How about you? Let's go. Let's try. 
Good morning, Lakeside family. I hope you're doing well today, staying safe. I'm Associate Pastor J.R. Farales, and I was honored to be doing this message today. Let's open up in prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for this day. I ask that the Holy Spirit comes through us, Father, and empowers us. Open up our, our ears and our hearts to your word today. A good word, Father, this word that's going to penetrate our hearts. In Jesus' name I pray. And everyone says, Amen, and amen indeed. Oh, I'd like to open up your Bibles to the book of Luke. The 19th chapter, verses 9 through 10. I'll give you a little time to get it. And it reads, Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is the son of Abraham. For the Son of God came to seek and to save the lost. Amen. Today, you know, I was thinking about this time of year. In the whole world, people are looking to Jesus the day he came to earth. More than any other time, this is what they're looking at. He came as a baby. He was born as son of, of, of God. For the Bible says the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost of God, is the one that impregnated and overshadowed Mary. He looked and acted like a normal child. He was a son of man. He had gotten his body from the human genes of Mary. When we read the book of Luke, the 19th chapter, the 10th verse, it sums everything up in one sentence. The reason why God wrapped himself in the flesh was to come to earth to seek and to save the lost. That was his whole purpose of coming to earth. We don't know how much he weighed. I assume probably maybe he weighed seven pounds. I could, I could say seven pounds. But he was seven pounds of salvation. Seven pounds of joy and peace. Forgiveness. He was a seven pound Messiah. Amen? Not very big, but he took on the biggest job ever assigned to a human being. In the history of mankind. He has responsibility to redeem you and I. And had the, and had the responsibility to purchase our salvation with his own life. I know it's hard for us to comprehend the complete picture of the incarnation of God, the embodiment of a deity, of the spirit, of an earthly form, the union of divine and human nature in Christ Jesus. We, don't, we can't grasp the whole meaning because we have nothing to compare, nothing to compare it to. People like to compare people like uh, LeBron James to MJ. Or uh, Barry Sanders to sweetness. Come on. Sweetness. You can't compare anything to Jesus. He stands by himself. There's no one to compare him to. God has never done this before. In the book of John, the fourth chapter, the 24th verse, tells us God is spirit. The spirit of decided to come to earth as a man. God was manifested in the flesh justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached to the Gentiles, believed in the world, and received up to glory. So when he came, he knew what he had to come for. The angels seen him. He came in and he ascended into glory. The apostle John tried to help us to understand what God and the manger, what it was about. In John 1, chapter 14, the world became the word the word became flesh and made the dwelling among us. He has seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Full of grace and truth. The glory of the Father. God Almighty mixes divine nature with human nature to become a sacrifice for our sins. You know, he paid the price for my soul. Brothers and sisters, listen closely. Without Jesus, we wouldn't have no Christmas. Just think about that. Without him coming to earth and doing what he did, there'd be no Christmas. The time of year would be like any other time of year. Any other time. It wouldn't matter. It wouldn't be even on a calendar. There would be no special programs, no getting ready for plays, Christmas plays, remember those? Or anything, any banquets. 
There would be no lights on the houses. Beautiful lights they had. Special programs. Nothing like that. There would be no wrap, uh, wrap presents under the trees or manger scenes in front of people's yards, which I love. Without Jesus, there would be no eggnog. And that alone would devastate my brother Roy because he loves eggnog. Believe me, he does. He loves that stuff. Not hearing the caroling outside, people caroling outside your homes. The 25th of December be like, like March 15th or, or August 12th. And it wouldn't be a special day, it'd be no day. I realized Jesus was not born on the 25th. The first two Christians, centuries, have no knowledge of the exact date. But you know what December 25th is a unique and special day in our hearts? Because we remember. And he was born for our sake to save our soul. We know that by reading the Bible, God's word, why he came down here. And believe me, he knew the same thing. So he was born to die for us. To die for us. This whole purpose was that. He was born for our salvation. He came to seek and save the lost of this earth. Think about this in Acts chapter 4, verses 12. Salvation is found and no one else. And there is no other name under heaven given to mankind which must be saved. So there's, that means no one else could save you. So if he didn't come, there is no salvation. No one could save you. No other faith, no other uh, high priest in like Buddha or anyone else, no one else but him, his name, could save us, give us salvation. This verse wouldn't exist even if Jesus had not come. Amen? In the flesh for our salvation. Without Jesus, we'd just be born. Live our lives a while the way we do and then die. There wouldn't be nothing like you know, possibility for eternity or to have eternity with Him or hope for that mansion of glory or even eternal rewards. We wouldn't have anything to look forward to you know, I, I remember when I was younger, death was scary because I thought it was just black. A black hole, a black, no lights, nothing. You know, kind of an evil feeling. But because of Jesus, we see the light. We know that we have another life for eternity. This is very special to me and I hope to you. Because death is scary, but not no more. We have the Lord in us. But because of Jesus, I have the chance to be... Be saved and joy in me and peace in me. I have the opportunity to spend eternity with him. Amen? And if Jesus did not come, we couldn't have these beautiful songs. Hark the hero angels sing. The whole little town of Bethlehem. The first Noel. It's a great song. Would be meaningless. It wouldn't even be created. O holy, O holy night. Joy to the world wouldn't make no sense. What are we being joyful for? We're only dependent on each other to do what we have to do. But there'd be no joy in this world at all. Where do we get it from? How, how can we sing about a way in a manger when there's no baby? No baby. Or silent night. We would all be in heaven. We will, we will all get to heaven. Love it. Would never have been written without Jesus being born. All these beautiful songs, all these songs of hope and glory and praises would never be here. Without Jesus, we wouldn't have no salvation. Without Jesus, no hope of glory. Without Jesus, no reason to celebrate. No celebration. Just think about this. If you took the name of Jesus out of the Bible, the story of incarnation out of the Word of God, what would you have left? A nice story. An encouraging book. A history. But it would just be like any other novel. You could read it, enjoy it, but you get nothing out of it. That it won't, It'll stop there. <coughs> Excuse me. At the end of the Bible, you know, at the Revelation, it'd be nothing. That's it. No hope of salvation. No eternal life. It'll just be a great novel. Nothing else. 
Like, you know, with Jesus being born and coming and wrapped in flesh and in a manger, salvation makes the Bible way different. It changes the whole concept of the Bible. That gives me strength and direction in my life that I have to, to better my life, to lead, to overcome things, to be an overcomer. But without Jesus, I'm lost. I'll admit that I'm lost. I have nothing. How about you? Where would you be without Jesus? What would you have to look for? The world wants to stop praying publicly in our schools. And now, the Indiana State House. You can pray, but you can't mention the name of Jesus. You can't mention that. Why? Why can't you, name, why can't you say the name of Jesus? The world wants to say happy holidays instead of Merry Christmas. The world wants to advertise your holiday lights instead of Christmas lights. Holiday trees instead of Christmas trees. They want to remove Jesus Christ out of our hearts and minds. They can try it all they want, but that's what they want to do. They want to make this time just like any other time of year. It's just another day. The very word Christian means Christ-like, to be Christ-like. That's what it means. Are you Christ-like? Without Jesus, there would be no Christians at all. What would you have to live for? There'd be no salvation, so there'd be no born again. It'd just be people. Good people, great people, honorable people, but that's it. That's where it stops. You die, and he's gone. They're gone. We all be lost. We'll be sinners in the world walking around and we do whatever comes naturally. Paul writes in Ephesians, second chapter, verses two through four. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive in Christ, even when we were dead in our transgressions. He did that for us. It is by grace we have been saved. Without Jesus, we just... Live in a house. But Jesus, we are a part of a household. A family of God. Wow. Just think of that. A family of God. Sometimes even my family of God is, is more loving than my true family. I don't know if you ever feel that way. Sometimes it happens. Because they have this love that comes from an unconditional God. Jesus, an unconditional love he has for us, it drips on us, it flows in us. And that's what we give out to other people. What a difference Jesus makes in our lives. Without Jesus, again, no salvation. Without Jesus, there'd be no hope for glory. No peace, no joy, no rejoicing. Without Jesus, there'd be no healing. Just imagine that. No healing. Because right now I pray for healing for everyone who has the virus. I pray for healing upon myself, upon people who are just hurt. I pray for healing for the mothers that lose their children in gunfights. I, you know, I pray for healing, but then without Jesus, we don't have the healing. What do we do? Without Jesus, no deliverance from addiction. Without Jesus. Without Jesus, no song, no worship, no praising Him. We lifted up our hands and that chills you get when you know the, the spirit that's in you. But with Christ, we have it all. We have everything with Christ. You know, this next verse, this next book I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read, I, it's, it's, it's one that should be known in your hearts no matter what. But I'm going to say the book and the, and the verse, and I, you don't even need your Bibles to recite this with me. I would like you to recite it with me together. On three. It's the book of John, John 16, 316. One, two, three. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. For whoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. Wow. Everlasting life. That's the whole thing, right? That's our that's our salvation. That's the prayer. That's the verse that puts it all together. 
And he gave up his son for us to have salvation. He didn't have to do that. Almighty God could do whatever he wants. But he wanted to do this for us. The world wants to remove Jesus Christ from Christmas. Why do you think that? Because they have lost, they are lost and living in a dark world of evil. It's the, it's the airways. It's the Satan's there. And people are drawn to him by different things, not with social media. Even our young kids are swearing before I could ever think about swearing. They're seeing things that we never see, we never see in our age. With Jesus being the light of the world, we have joy and peace. We have forgiveness. And he is that light. And that light should be in us. That light should be flowing through us. That light should be showing other people who we are. I say in my heart, I'm not ashamed of Jesus. I'm not ashamed of saying his name. I know many people say God. And people accept God, little G. But Jesus is different. They think when you say Jesus, you're pushing something on them. You know, we are the light of the world. We are supposed to carry out the mission. We are supposed to let people know about Christmas. Our family, not about Santa Claus, even though he's part of that. But Jesus, who is the reason for the season. He's truly the reason. He came to earth for us. To die for us and give us salvation. Let's celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ this year like we never celebrated before. Let that light shine all through this pandemic and, 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 and sadness and people who are hurt and people don't know what to rush in. Let them know what this season is. Let us, let us be like it's the first time we're going to celebrate the birth of Christ with shouts of joy and praises to Him. Let our light shine from the mountaintop to our neighborhoods. Let people know where they can go. And you got any activity seen out in front of your house? I know Pastor Dennis and I do. I know many people, others. I don't see too many of them. Let's not be ashamed of who we love and who saved our lives. I want you to have a great Christmas. I really believe and I pray that you shine your light and you let your children know the story. Read the story to them about the birth of Christ. A beautiful story. And you have a safe Christmas. And I'll see you again. Merry Christmas, everyone. Thank you.
Pastor Jay, for that inspiring message. No Jesus, no Christmas. Christmas Eve, December the 24th at 7 p.m., we will have a Christmas Eve candlelight service. Tune in with us and watch with family and friends. We also want to thank those that have continually to support us financially with your tithes and offering. God bless you. God bless you. And if you would like to support us, you can go to our website and go to the giving and where you can donate if, what you would like to donate to us. And also remember this here. When praises go up, blessings come down. God bless you. We'll see you next week.